Thank you. So hi, I'm Daniel Lungi. I work for Trend Micro, and I'm glad to be here to discuss some findings we made on the Iron Tiger attack tour lately. Uh, this talk is still clear, so feel free to take any selfies with my slides if that's your thing. I, I don't mind. Uh, so the, um, this is the end of the talk. So after a quick introduction, uh, we will see the different infection vectors that this tractor uses. We'll focus on three custom malware families that uh, they develop. We'll discuss uh, something about the targets. Uh, we will explain our methodology for attributing these campaigns to this tractor before we conclude this talk. So Iron Tiger has many names, Emissary Panda, IPT27, etc., etc. Uh, they have been here for a long time now, so we have been tracking them also for a long time. The first paper we wrote on them is, uh, was in 2015, and it actually mentioned a campaign that happened in 2010. So they, they have been here for a long time. And since the last three years, we've been blogging about them almost every year. So they are known to use uh, exploit vulnerabilities to, to infect their users. So according to recent public reports, uh, they have been using the proxy logon vulnerabilities, the log for shell vulnerability, one vulnerability in Atlassian Confluence, and other uh, reports like they use also SharePoint or Exchange to compromise their targets. Uh, prior to 2020, they were known to use watering holes, uh, also some weaponized documents uh, using the Royal Road uh, Exploitation Toolkit, or even in old, very old school campaigns, they use spear phishing emails with rare attachments with uh, malicious executable files. Uh, but now, more, more recently, they, they switched to supply chain attacks. So in Dece December 2020, ESET reported a supply chain attack uh, targeting Able Desktop, which is a chat application used, among others, uh, by the Mongolian government. Uh, last year, we found a supply chain attack on MimiChat, which is also a chat application used in Southeast Asia. So we'll focus a bit more on this second supply chain attack. Uh, so MimiChat uh, is a chat application. As you can see, it's written in Chinese. If you've been here uh, at BotConf last year, you already have seen this screenshot, actually, uh, because we discussed another threat actor, Earl uh, Baroka, uh, in the Operation Gambling Puppet, and they also targeted this same application. So this is something that was uh, interesting to us. Uh, but in this, in this case of Aryan Tiger, it's actually a supply chain attack, so they modified the, the legitimate uh, installers delivered by the legitimate website. And we found that this, they did that targeting uh, the Windows uh, installer in 2021 on the Mac OS installer in 2022. If you go to the registration page of this uh, application, you can register by mobile phone, and the prefixes you can use uh, is uh, this limited list, so you can see that it's mostly Southeast Asian countries, so this gives an idea of uh, where the targets uh, of interest for this detector could be. Uh, but also, you could wonder, well, what is this MimiChat application? I've never hear, heard about it. Uh, is it legitimate, actually, or is it developed by the detector? So we, we searched it for that to answer for that question. Uh, we found no reference to the developing company on the website. And if you searched at the time for MimiChat, there was no relevant results also in search engines, actually. Uh, so we looked at the, the, the file properties, so on the left, the executable properties, on the right, the um, electron.js uh, package.json file, and we found references to SIGTOP, uh, the name SIGTOP with the SIGTOPSER.com domain name. So remember that name, it's the, probably the developing company name. We searched for that uh, on search engines, we found this like job offerings, where we saw, so you, you can read here, but it, it's actually a company based in Philippines, uh, they are hiring an Android developer, and uh, the, the, the salary they offer is paid in Taiwanese dollars. So they actually hire a company based in the Philippines hiring Taiwanese developers. So let's go, go back to this uh, chat application. The desktop uh, version is built with, with Electron JS framework, which is multi-platform, which means that uh, the, the developer do, does not need to change the code to make a build for Windows or Mac OS, etc. The Tractor modified the Electron main.js file to download the malicious payload. So they actually inserted this obfuscated JavaScript code on top of this file. This is uh, known the, to, to be packed with Dean Edwards JavaScript Packer. This is a packer that is available online. And so if you input this like uh, very simple code alert one on the packet, you will get this like obfuscated uh, very long uh, string of JavaScript code. 
if you they, they obfuscate it, uh, for the Windows version that was Trojanized, this, the, that was the, the, the obfuscated code. It's very simple JavaScript code, downloading a file, looking at the platform, uh, and downloading three files accurate from this IP address to the temporary directory, and running the executable file. For the macOS uh, version, it was similar uh, code snippet. Uh, only the platform is different. It's Darwin in this case, which, which is related to macOS. The IP address is also different, and it only downloaded one file named RShell, which is a malware we will see later. Uh, interesting thing about this supply chain attack, so w w when we were monitoring them, the SIGTOP company uh, published a new version. So I downloaded actually the, the newer version, looked at it, and it was clean, so it was interesting. So I told my colleague, okay, this is weird, this new version is clean. So he downloaded, a few hours later, he downloaded the same file from the same legitimate website, and he told me, no, this is compromised, so you double check it. So I double checked, it was clean, so I downloaded it again, and actually I found it was a different file that I, I downloaded the second time, and it was indeed compromised. So it was interesting, so we, I looked at the, a bit more about it, and in this installer of Mimichat, there is some like 7-zip archive, so this is good because it will uh, keep the timestamp of the modification time of the files. So on the left you can see the, the, the legitimate unmodified uh, uh, installer. So we'll see all the files are mostly uh, modified at the same time. And on the right it's the, the um, compromised backdoor installer by the threat actor and you can see only one file has a different like uh, modification timestamp and it was modified one, one hour and a half later. So it means that the threat actor, it took one hour and a half to the threat actor to build, to, to make a new build that is compromised, which I believe is pretty, pretty nice, it's pretty quick on their side. Uh, so another question we, do, we ask ourselves is how did they manage to compromise SIGTOP? So we don't have the final answer because uh, we tried to reach to SIGTOP and actually never got any answer, but we found interesting uh, data in our telemetry. So there is this domain name, trustvarysl.org, which is actually related to the threat actor. And we found some get requests to, some, to retrieve some JavaScript uh, script from this domain, followed by actually a post request uh, to a PHP script hosted on the same subdomain. So we could retrieve this uh, JavaScript script, analyze it. It was very simple code snippet of uh, JavaScript that was actually looking for like username and password uh, variable names and that would retrieve the content and send it uh, to the PHP script. So it was a password grabber. And uh, the, the get request actually had a referrer. And the referrer was some like subdomains of SIGTOP, uh, SIGTOPSR.com on SIGTOP.VIP. So actually, uh, the referrer was related to the SIGTOP company. Uh, so I redacted here the subdomain because it's actually still online, but uh, it, it was an authentication portal for some developer tool. So probably, uh, and actually the, the, the request came from a Taiwanese IP address, so probably a Taiwanese developer, which, which matches actually what we found uh, priorly related to SIGTOP. So our guess here is that probably the threat actor compromised these portals to inject this uh, JavaScript uh, script and uh, use the, that to retrieve credentials to get an access to the SIGTOP build environment easy access to, to that, and then that is how they can quickly modify the installers of Mimichat. So more recently, we found another like chat application that could be used as an infection vector. So in November 2022, we found a sysupdate, which is a malware we will discuss later, sample, named Udo client with this version number. So we, uh, we searched for Udo, which is actually, again, a chat application, but more oriented to enterprise customers developed by a Chinese company, Xinda.im, and they, actually in their website, they list all their customers. So this is like an excerpt of, of it, and then they are all based in mainland China. And some of them are very big, like more than 10,000 uh, customers or workstations in multiple like, government or manufacturing or energy industry. So it could be a, actually a nice uh, infection vector. Uh, on the left, you have the modified sysupdate uh, file properties, and on the right, it's like a legitimate UDO installer. So you can see the version numbering is quite the same. The only difference here would be the file description and product name, which in the modified version was iTalk. And so we also found on some victim, this like program files iTalk folder, which contained 
legitimate uh, Yudu files signed by Xinda IM, so the developer of, of Yudu, so legitimate files in this italk folder. So our, our guess here, so again, we don't have the, the final answer, but our guess is that the chat actor somehow repackaged this Yudu chat application, backdoored it, and named it italk, and used it as a lure to deliver sysupdate. So let's now discuss uh, some of the malware toolkits uh, used by this threat actor. So we've, we've seen them use like five different malware families in 2021. Hyperbro, which is uh, actually only for Windows. Sysupdate, which uh, works on li Windows on rec more recently on Linux. R Shell, which runs on Linux and Mac OS. On Pandora and Hayden, which are two Windows rootkits. And the last one being available on GitHub. So for, for Pandora and Hayden, they are just here for your reference, but we will not uh, talk more about them later. So Hyperbroad has multiple features, uh, features that you would expect from any backdoor actually, so file manager, service manager, process manager, uh, screenshot grabbing, uh, code execution, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the, it appeared actually in 2017, and uh, it is the evolution of another malware family named HTTP Browser that appeared in 2015. And then in 2019, there was an updated version of Hyperbro. This uh, updated version uh, actually added some features like clipboard stealing, key, key logging, uh, Windows registry manipulation, and time stomping. And one interesting thing is that they changed actually the URI paths to the CNC. And so in the updated version, there is this slash API slash v2 slash Ajax. And this is nice because there are, there are very f uh, few rate of force positives. So if you find like this, some post request to this uh, URI path, path, it probably means you have Hyperbro in your network. Uh, it is usually distributed as a set of three files, uh, like plugix, so it will be one executable file that is legitimate and signed with an authentic certificate that will actually be vulnerable, vulnerable to sideloading uh, DLLs, vulnerability, so it will sideload a DLL that will or then load a third file, which is usually some encrypted or compressed uh, payload, the final payload. So we found, these are the different names that, that we found for DLL is being used by, uh, to download the Hyper, to load Hyperbro. So as you can see, the list is pretty short actually, so that there have not been that, that many DLL names, but this is only for your reference. And please, please don't like, uh, only use this for attribution. For example, if you see some mpsvc.dll file being side-loaded, it does not mean that it is an Hyperbro, it does not mean it is Iron Tiger because other actors will sometimes abuse the same vulnerabilities. So this is just like for your information. Um, Iron Tiger is also known to use stolen signing certificates. Uh, so we've seen some Hyperbro samples being signed by a Cheetah Mobile certificate in 2021 and 2022. So let's now talk about sysupdate. It's again a custom backdoor. Again, same kind of feature. So this is like boring slide. So I will skip it. Uh, this update, the oldest sample we found is in 2015. Uh, there, there was, in 2020, a new loading mechanism. So instead of using three files, we saw them using four files. So we blogged about it, but then it's the only time we saw this. So it's quite funny that they know they are back to three files being used. And last year, they published a new newer version. So this new version added some support for the Azure library. This is a library to it is a synchronous uh, library, multi-platform, so it totally changed the code structure, so it makes the reversing a bit more difficult because the, it's, more, it's harder to follow the, the code flow. But we believe the threat actor did that because they can now, they added support for the Linux platform. So this library being multi-platform, this is probably the reason why they did this in the fir first place. They also added one interesting feature, which is DNS tunneling. So they would uh, use the base32 algorithm to encode some data with a custom alphabet actually, and they would use the, text, the DNS takes the records to send and receive data uh, to the CNC. This is the list of the DLLs being siloed. So you can see the list is a bit more, is a bit longer than for Hyperbro. The interesting part here, so you, this DLP print, the 32.dll has already been seen for Hyperbro. So again, this is not, uh, as you can, as, as I said before, don't rely on this solely for, for making some assumptions on the malware family that is delivered. The interesting part are the two more recent uh, libraries, libwazu shared and limwin petred. Because actually what we found is that uh, those two libraries are side-loaded by 
legitimate Wazoo executables. So Wazoo is an open source cybersecurity platform. And actually what happened here is that at one uh, victim, Wazoo was actually deployed. So it was used there. And uh, we believe that the threat actor noticed that Wazoo was being used and they actually searched specifically for vulnerabilities, DLL side loading vulnerabilities in Wazoo executables and found them actually. So these vulnerabilities were unreported previously. And uh, because that, that makes that they will use some Wazoo uh, executable running on the, the victim and as the victim is using Wazoo, this will look legitimate. So it's kind of actually clever on the threat actor side and it shows how targeted their campaigns can be. Uh, they also use signed certificates for this update. So in 2018, one certificate for, for Kepware from Kepware Technologies. And more recently, and more inter interestingly, we saw one certificate uh, belonging to a VM Protect developer. So VM Protect, uh, as you might know, is some software solution that is used to pack uh, code, so to make the re reversing engineering of some code very complicated, they implement a custom virtual machine. And so they, they probably compromised. The, the, they, we found some samples being signed by this certificate belonging to this VM Protect developer. Uh, we, we found other legitimate files being signed by the same certificate. So they looked actually related to some VM Protect demo version. Uh, but also this helped us to pivot and find other malware families. We found a post-exploitation tool, which is a custom password and cookie stealer for Chrome browser. And we also found very recently in January, it was a more puzzling for us, uh, we found a Redline sample. So Redline is a malware family, a stealer that will actually be discussed tomorrow more in detail. And uh, we believe it's probably unrelated to Iron Tiger because it's more oriented to our cyber crime, while, while Iron Tiger is more oriented to our espionage. So we have multiple uh, guesses about this. Uh, one reason could be that Iron Tiger compromised VM Protect on got the certific signing certificate from there. Maybe they found a way to extract uh, the certificate from the demo version. Maybe it was hard-coded there, or maybe Redline did the same on their own. Or maybe they bought the certificate from the underground, and as did the Redline developers. We, we don't know yet. Also, funny part is that one uh, of the sample was actually packed with VM Protect, which gives us this kind of headaches that you can see here. Uh, now let's talk about our shell. So some of the features, again, it's very simple backdoor that collects OS information, sends and receives commands to the CNC, lists files, etc. always the same. So the interesting part here is that it's compiled for Linux and Mac OS. So we found the oldest version for Linux in 2021 and for Mac OS in 2022, which shows the interest on, for those platforms on the threat actor side. Some uh, numbers here about the infrastructure, some statistics. Since November 2020, we actually found 28 hyperbro CNC IP addresses, and actually only one in 2023. Around the same number of, of CNCs for sysupdate, like 30, and again, only one in 2023. Uh, but for the newer version of sysupdate that actually uses domain names, we found nine different domain names uh, since May 2022. And uh, also interesting is that one of them actually contain the, in the domain name uh, the name of the targeted company name. So this means that the threat actor at the time of domain registration already knew that they would target that company. So again, it shows that they, they, they targeted their campaigns quite, quite well. And only, we only found five CNCs for our share family. So a timeline summary, in 2015, sysupdate appeared, 2017, Hyperbro, both for Windows platform, 2021, RShell for Linux, and in 2022, RShell and sysupdate for macOS platform. This is some kind of summary of the platforms being targeted and when. So let's now discuss uh, the targets. Uh, for 2022 and 2023, we found 13 targets only in our telemetry, and in the Taiwan and Philippines. And we, out of these 13 targets, we could identify only two of them. So one of them was a Taiwanese gaming company, and the other one a Filipino gambling company. So actually, this shift towards gambling and gaming industry in, in Southeast Asia uh, has been seen since uh, 2019. Also, the, the UDU infection vector that we mentioned before suggests actually maybe uh, an internal surveillance targeting, so mainland China targeting. So if you're not based in Southeast Asia, you are not in the gaming or gambling industry, you might ask, why should I care about this threat actually? 
Well, I, I have an answer for, for this. Um, in January 2022, BFV, which is a German government agency, reported that Hyperbro was used to target uh, German commercial companies. And uh, they provided some error rules in that, that report. And in the metadata, there was one hash that actually was listed in our blog post from April 2021. Then, uh, in September of last year, CISA, which let's say is the US CERT, reported that Hyperbro was used to target a defense uh, sector in, um, organization. They provided another, another hash, different one, but that was also listed in our blog post from April 2021. And uh, Intrinsec last year, which is a French company, uh, also published a report of uh, incident response they made in a French company that, uh, that where, where they found Hyperbro being used to. They didn't provide any IOCs or industry targeted, but from the blog post, you can see that the TTPs they, they, they discuss are definitely the same ones that we, we saw in April 2021. And remember, remember that at the time, 2021, ourselves are only seen gambling being targeted, so this shows that our, actually our vision is biased by our customers and dependent on our telemetry, but definitely this actor targets Western countries on sensitive industries too. So let's now discuss a bit about the attribution and how we attributed these campaigns to this actor. The first hint we, we got was the usage of Hyperbro malware family. So in the community, everyone seems to think that Hyperbro is exclusive to Iron Tiger threat actor. Uh, but we are not sure about this because in, actually in October 2019, we found this updated version of Hyperbro that we already mentioned, and uh, we found this during Operation DRB Control Investigation. And then uh, the next year, in December 2020, uh, Avast and ESET published different blog posts about different campaigns that actually happened in 2020, and these campaigns were using old versions of Hyperbro. So our question is why, if you're a, only a single group is using this, this malware family, if they have access to the newer version, why would they use the old version for more recent campaigns? So one answer could be that maybe there are multiple groups that have access to this malware, so we, we search it for better attribution hints. So this is what we found. We found this Archel Linux sample that connected to this IP address, and this IP address, when we looked at the reverse DNS, we found this like in Bayou weird string domain name. And in a previous report for we, we made for Iron Tiger, we found this like sysupdate on Hyperbro samples that connected to these two different IP addresses. So you can notice that the top IP address is in the same range of the R shell IP address on the left. And if you looked at the reverse DNS for those IP addresses, they were also again this same weird in Bayou string. But the, the Hyperbro sample was dated back to October 2020, the sysupdate to December, and the Archel to in June of 2021. So there was, there was multiple months apart from this, uh, this infrastructure link, so we, we decided to look a, a bit more if we could find better hints again for attribution. So we looked at this Mimichat installer that was compromised. So we mentioned already that it contains some packed JavaScript code that actually connected to this IP address. This IP address hosted one R-shell malware sample, but also Hyper an Hyperbro malware sample. And when we looked at the characteristics of this uh, Hyperbro malware sample, so let's say the imp hash, the, the rich header characteristics, we found that they actually matched uh, some other samples that we already attributed to our Iron Tiger in our previous report uh, for, from Hyperbro Pandora sysupdate samples. But yet we were still like using our own research to, 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 to uh, find the attribution, so we searched it for more, and we found that this Apple Bro was signed by Cheetah Mobile Certificate, and actually this certificate was mentioned in the German BFV cyber brief that we mentioned before. So okay, now we can rely on some government entity attribution, so we were glad that we had this, and okay, this was Iron Tiger in our opinion. One last hint that uh, was found actually by Sequoia is that this Dean Edwards JavaScript packer was also used in some previous Lucky Mouse. So Lucky Mouse is the name for Iron Tiger for Kaspersky. So in a previous Lucky Mouse campaign, in some water holding campaign, and the, the malware delivered was Hyperbro. So again, this is like more low, low confidence uh, hint, but still relevant to, to discuss it. So let's now conclude this uh, presentation. So we saw that Iron Tiger develops its own malware families and updates them regularly. 
uh, they, they use multiple infection vectors, but the chat applications are actually one like strong trend uh, on their side for the, the, the latest campaigns. Uh, we have seen they are interested actually in Linux on macOS platforms on top of Windows platforms, so this is like interesting. Yeah. And also we saw that they carefully will plan their campaigns, so they will first like steal some signing certificates so they, they could sign their own malwares. Uh, the, maybe with the, the, the goal to be less detected, for example, they would search for vulnerabilities that are relevant to the, their targets. They will register domain names also related to their targets, uh, and they are even able to, to identify some kind of totally unknown on a uh, small application like MimiChat, because they probably know that this application is used by the, the people they are targeting, so that they have a good like reconnaissance capability. We also mentioned this shift in the targeting since 2019, uh, but as we mentioned, the formal targeting of sensitive industries on Western countries still applies. So this is like all the references for the different uh, blog posts I mentioned before. And if you have any question, I will be glad to answer them. Okay, now the questions. Okay. Good presentation. Um, my question is: I know the Mimi Chat is focused on Asia. Uh, what is the point of infection for uh, for the German German companies? I imagine that the uh, German would not install Mimi Chat. Uh, what uh, would be? They, uh, they didn't. Uh, the German uh, report doesn't uh, talk about the infection vectors, or, or maybe I'm, uh, I'm wrong. I, mean, I think they, they mentioned some uh, vulnerabilities being used uh, to, to deliver this hyperbro malware. I think they, they use computers exposed to the internet and yeah, okay. exactly. Some like vulnerabilities and uh, servers being faced. Uh, yeah, connected to internet. Exactly. Yes. Thank you very much for the presentation and great talk. And my question is um, like two short questions, but uh, one of them is about Taiwanese target. Can you reveal industry which uh, that target is uh, operating in? Which industry targeted in Taiwan? Yeah. Uh, it was the gaming and the gambling industry in Taiwan okay. and also some IT providers, yeah. Okay, thanks. And um, another question is you mentioned like 13 targets you've uh, discovered yourself and uh, can you share was it through some kind of uh, your internal research which was spawned by previous um, um, incidents or it was all outside of kind of trend micro was reported by the customers to you? Uh, no, it was actually, we have two ways of uh, looking and finding for the, so the question was how did we find the 13 targets in our telemetry? So we had two ways for doing this. Uh, one way was searching for the IOCs that we identify, so the different ashes of the like DLL loaders, for example, that, that we found. So for, so we had some, or some of the Linux R shell samples also, we had some detection for this, so it's the detection of the files. And another way for the, how we found them was the connections in the like network connections, as we had identified uh, some, a list of domain names or IP addresses related to, to a tractor, we searched it for connections to those domain names and IP addresses. So it was file on network uh, connections. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We, we, none of them was reported to us. We found, look for them in our telemetry. So this also, I mean, this is also why I think you should enable the telemetry, but of course that's up to you. But I, I know that that's what actually why our uh, telemetry is biased because f usually uh, European customers will, will disable the telemetry. So this does not mean that within our customers there is no target for Iron Tiger, but it only means that we don't see it in the, the telemetry. Any other questions? One, two, three. 
Okay, thank you.